how many crown jewel franchises are there? And then what are the rankings? Well, you know, because when you texted me that, you were like, is the number like less than 15? So I was thinking about it, you know, and my feeling on this is that the number is either very small or almost too big. That it, 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 that the number has to be very small because if you start moving beyond like, uh, you know, the, the kind of these true sort of elite franchises, um, you then start being like, well, but what about this? Team? If you're going to include that team, you also got to yeah. include that team. And all of a sudden it balloons up. So I think there are four. Okay. I think there, I, I think it's, I think. So I had, I had five in my first tier. So I'll be interested to see which one you left out. Okay. So I think that the, the, the principal one is the Dallas Cowboys. I had them number one I as think, well. Yeah. I think number two is the Yankees. I had them number two. And I think that, and I think that the two that I would say are sort of connected and ancillary to that are the Lakers and the Celtics. And they're sort of dependent on the existence of each. But the way I was thinking about this is a little different, I think, than you might be. I, I, I was wondering if maybe you would really skew toward the actual value, like the, like, like the cash value in a way, like the worth of it. To me, these are things that the way no, I No, because you can't, because the, be Bronco, like, yeah. the Broncos went yeah. for like seven billion. Sure. Yes. And I wouldn't call yes. them one of the all-time crown yeah. jewels. To me, that's more like situation, market. It's a team that's available. It's a famous name. But I wouldn't say they were like a top 10 crown jewel franchise. So like, who was your fifth one? So I had, I had the same list you had. Cowboys, Yankees, Lakers, Celtics, like 3A, 3B. But then I had the Dodgers in there as they well. Were, because they, they would be close, yeah. Okay. So for a few reasons. One is... I think it's the second most famous baseball franchise. They still have some New York fans from when they're in Brooklyn, but then also the LA piece. But really, I think the reason they moved in there was because of this Otani signing and having him and having the connection they have now in the Far East with how much money they make, that they're like really the, there's only two global baseball teams. So I think they kind of have to be in there. And then I think after that, I looked at it as like, yeah, you're right. You could have 25 teams on this list, but well, I was working put, backwards. I was like, who yeah. has to be on the list? And I, I started mean, there. If you put the Dodgers in, then suddenly it's like, well, what about the Knicks? I mean, New York is essentially a you know a, a real basketball town. They play in the most famous arena. Um, you know, it's uh, it obviously is kind of like a um, like a, like a media driven mark, but this is kind of a media driven question. You know, in the sense that, like, no, but so uh, but think about that, it this you know, way. Talking about what are the uh, so, so think about it this way. I think the city really matters if it's one of the biggest markets in America. I think the history of the franchise and how long they've been and how many generations of fans they have matters. I think you have to think about if somebody hears the name, whether they're here or whether they're in like Germany or New Zealand, if you're like the Knicks, like, oh, I know the Knicks. Um, then you have to think like if they won the title, how like big and impactful and important would that be? So I had like for my next four, I had the 49ers, the New York football giants, the Golden State Warriors and the Knicks as the next four That's, for yeah. different reasons. Because I think the I'm, 49ers and the Giants are the next no. two big football teams and they have the history. They've won titles. They have generations of fans. They're in big cities. And then the so you Warriors... Don't, you don't the include Warriors, the Packers in that then. You don't put the Packers I had them, in that group or the Steelers. I had the Packers so me, and the Steelers is, right after. This is what's complicated, though. When you start kind of opening the window just a little bit, then all of a sudden it seems like, well, how can you have them but not those? See, my thinking was this. The reason I picked those four franchises was this idea that if one of these teams collapsed and went bankrupt, it would suggest to me the league is collapsing and going bankrupt. Wow. That's a good way to think about it. That that if that you know like a you know uh, I, I, I I the, the Cowboys are a particularly interesting example to me. I mean they're like they're the top of this you know because okay so like the idea of America's team that is something that everyone seems to disagree with and everyone accepts that anytime you discuss this people give you reasons why Dallas is not. America's team, and yet the conversation never disappears. And that's when you know something is really important. When the fact that people consistently try to explain to you why it isn't, and it goes on for years. 
that there that, that decades pass and there are people still trying to say Dallas really isn't America's team. But of course, if that was really the case, you wouldn't constantly bring it up. You know, I think he bought the Cowboys. Jerry Jones bought the Cowboys for like 140 million. Now they're 9.2 billion. Football has become more popular since 1989, but not to the extent that that has appreciated in value. It hasn't changed that much, you know, um, uh, which is which is troubling. It's troubling in a way. It's like all the value of all. I, I do think that the ascending value of these franchises and the ascending value of salaries is going to cause a real problem in about 20 to 30 years in a way that I think that the American sports landscape is going to completely be reinvented, maybe almost gone um but that was but the reason Jesus. i picked those four franchises because yes, yes well i do i think that i think it's a problem i think it's going to be because what's going to happen is i at, at some point there is going to be an understanding or a collective realization by companies and corporations that advertising is not worth what we're putting into it that the value we're getting from it is not worth this cost and all of these leagues are dependent on the fact that they're the live events that people watch because that's the only place that people can see ever these commercials. They know that people will watch them because they, they, they can't fast forward if they're watching live. And I just, I mean, I, I noticed this with Super Bowl ads. If you notice with the Super Bowl ads, it's like they're not as innovative as there's that period in the 80s and 90s where it was the big deal. It's like, oh, we have that, you know, the 1984-based commercial and all these things. Now it's more like just actually having the slot. Just getting the slot. Use a commercial. It doesn't even seem that different from the other commercials. Just put it into the time frame because it's not worth putting all this money in. All we're trying to do is get people to notice it. And I do think over time, there's going to be a realization that that is not actually what sells things. Certainly not the cost advertising is going to have to go in order to pay for all these things. And I think there's going to be major work stoppages because I think what will happen is that the league will suddenly not have the money to pay athletes what the salaries have escalated to. And it's not like the athletes are going to go like, I understand. I understand. We, you know, they're going to be like, no way, pay me. And there's going to be these big stoppages and people are not going to mind the work stoppages as much as they have in the past. The idea of baseball disappearing for a summer or basketball disappearing for a winter is not going to impact people the way they did in the past. And that could be the end. Oh my That's God. a ways down the line. I mean, that baseball lockout in 81, that felt just like an absolute catastrophe. It did. So we, we didn't yeah. have that much to do. It's like they removed yeah. one of like the basics. I worry about what you just said the most with the NBA because they just have the least number of people per team and the amount of money that's being poured into it and guys making 80, 85 million a year plus whatever they make off the court. I, I just don't, it's this factor that I just don't know how it plays out. Well, I mean, it's and totally it fine, might be fine as long as the revenue keeps coming in. But at some point, I think it's going to stop. I don't, I, 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 I suspect that the, the, the there's going to be a complete sort of reevaluation of the value of advertising within the next 20 to 40 years. But um, getting back to what we were saying for them. So as I said, so the Cowboys, you know, it just, to me, it seems like if, if, if the Cowboys franchise was in trouble, this franchise who, you know, if the Cowboys go, if they start the year two and six, it's one of the main things people are talking about. Like, it's, it's like they are part of the discussion, regardless of how they're playing. They can play good, bad. If they're good, of course, people are talking about it. If they play bad, people are saying what's wrong. If they're average, people are like, do they need to blow it up? It's like they're the only team that seems to be uh, viewed as as like Everything is news. Literally so what, everything that happens is news. Yeah. What you're describing. So basically, I mean, there's a, a bunch of different barriers we can do for this, but really the Cowboys and the Lakers are the two most omnipresent franchises we have. And that you can tell by the ESPN and anyone I've and I went through it too when I did TV for them. Anyone who does TV for ESPN knows like it doesn't matter if the Cowboys and Lakers are good or not. What season? It's like, we're still, it's here we go. Welcome to NBA today. The Lakers are 18 and 19. Zach Lowe, what's going on with them? Can yeah, they still well, make the playoffs? That, that is a more important topic than what's going on with the Grizzlies. It just is. It is probably, except that if LeBron were not on the franchise and LeBron were to leave, I don't know if it keeps going. Where with Dallas, it doesn't seem to make a difference. It's like Quincy Carter can be the quarterback and people are like, what's yeah, going on? Which is why it's the like, Cowboys like, would like, be over. Like the Lakers, the Lakers need LeBron to be there. And they had Kobe before that. So, you know, before that, they had, it's like they, 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 they have been exceptionally good 
And but they're always going to have somebody because they're the yeah. Lakers. People are always going to want to play with them. I we'll had see, my, la- yeah. my last six teams because I had 15 total. Packers, Steelers, Cubs, Red Sox, Chicago Bears, New York Rangers. I only had one hockey team. The baseball, it w- it's weird to put the baseball in context because even you were, t- we were, we were talking about the Pete Rose documentary and just Pete Rose in general and how important he was. And I texted you a couple weeks ago about how 1978, the World Series, which was the Dodgers and the Yankees, was 44.2 million viewers for that World Series. Mm. Last year was 9.8. Now, yeah. that was the peak World Series ever. It was when people cared about baseball probably the most in the modern television era. Well, not but, just that, the population of America, I think, what, was 190 million? Yeah. And now so, it's 335 million. It's like, it's, you know, so when you look at that there were 195 million people in 48 million of them? You said were, that's what they was watching? 44.2. And now yeah, um, okay. last year was 9.8. And you're like, well, they, they, there's more to do. Well, the Super Bowl in 1978 was 79 million. And now it's 125 million. So football has unquestionably gotten bigger and baseball is just at a completely different place. And the Pete Rose piece of it is interesting to me because when I was growing up, he felt like one of the biggest stars in like sports, movies, TV. Like it felt like Pete Rose was one of like the 10 biggest stars in the world, Mm -hmm. you know? And I don't know if, I just don't know if a baseball player that would ever happen again. It would would basically have to be, I don't know a scenario because right right now Otani has a chance to have 50 homers and 50 steals, any pitches, which if I had said to you 20 years ago, there's this guy, he's going to come in. He's basically going to be Babe Ruth in 1918. You'd be like, well, that guy's going to be the biggest star in the world. And it's like, he's just not. Now you could say there's a bunch of other reasons for that, including the fact that people don't care about regular season baseball in the same way. But in 1978, that guy would have been a bigger deal. It's just a fact. Oh, sure. But like you say, like you'd have told me this 20 years ago, you know, actually, Bill, I think if we went back to our podcast 20 years ago, I feel we were talking about this. Which which piece? I feel like this idea that, no, that baseball has sort of kind of faded. I mean, I I feel like we've been talking about this for a long enough time now that we can almost sort of concede well it's happened so we don't really need to because it seems like mm. we keep sort of thinking about this idea it's like you know based I, I mean, yeah it like it's like it's in the past time. almost well it, you know because 20 years ago that's like when the yankees and the red sox had all that you know it was exciting and stuff people were watching those games it felt like it felt like a big deal we'd go to the bar and be on and stuff like that but there was already a sense that somehow this had it, it didn't seem as so it, it seemed as though people were still already then very clearly more interested in what was happening in football in October than what right. was happening in baseball. In but the reason Which I brought I, that up was, yeah. well, because for this crown jewel conversation, I think if we did it yeah. 20 years ago, I think the Red Sox would have been in like the top five or six. And now it's like, I, I bar- they barely made yes. the cut. So yeah, I think it's somewhere between 15 and 20, but really it's four or five that are the big ones. I do think what if like the 49ers went for sale, that would be a massive deal. If the New York football giants, any of those are like, no. they get giant the, prices. What about the St. Louis Cardinals? I feel like that has a lot, like like St. Louis is one of the few towns in America, I would say is absolutely a baseball town among major cities. Um, it seems as though the identity, like the whole kind of like, like St. Louis needs the Cardinals in a way that other places don't need their team Would that, does that factor into your consideration at all? I don't, I don't think it totally does because I just don't think the price would be nearly the same. Like if the Celtics go for 6 billion, that's territory that is really only NFL teams and that's it. Yeah. I think the Warriors would go for more than that. The Lakers would obviously go for way more. The Knicks would go for more. 